Hi everybody, this is Noelle for Petiti Garden Centers. We're in Oakwood Village and we are gonna show you what's in store for the fall. And something new for us this year are these cool petunias. They are actually an autumn variety of petunia. And what you need to know about these guys is that most petunias are cold tolerant. Well, I should say cool tolerant. They can usually tolerate a light freeze. And then if they get a nice sunny day, they can kind of bounce back. Um, so these are something that you should think about adding to your fall combos. We've made these combos for you, but aren't those colors so cool? There's like a caramel and a, a sort of vanilla, um, burnt orange, really, really neat. So look for these guys, they're super cows, okay? Um, which I think technically are a petunia and a calabrocoa. They kind of got together and they call them pet koa. So something new, something fun. Love the celosia. Um, this is actually a spiky type celosia. Um, this is in the Intense family. Um, I think this one is lipstick. It looks pretty pink for me. Um, so pink Intense, again, beautiful celosia that you actually see later in the summer and into the fall season because it really has this intense color, but it takes its time to develop. Um, this is a great annual that you can combine with all of those fall colors, your mums, your ornamental peppers. And um, these guys, they'll dry spiky like that. So you can definitely have this for a very long time in mixed containers and out in the annual garden. Let's go over this way. We have mums galore, of course. They're just starting to peak and open their early fall mum. Remember, when you plant mums, you wanna make sure if you're trying to naturalize them, create like a perennial mum in the garden, plant them as soon as possible. So early September is great. Even earlier, if you got two of them in August, that would be perfect. They usually need about six to eight weeks for those roots to develop. So get them in the ground as soon as possible. If you don't want them as a perennial, no problem. They will continue to bloom for you all the way into the cooler fall temperatures and they will be gorgeous in hanging baskets, in pots, wherever you wanna place them out in the garden. Down here we have all the ornamental peppers. Check these out. So all different colors, really, really fun. The thicker ones are actually in the Mambo series. So they've got yellow and orange and purple and red, all different colors. The thinner ones here, this one's a real cute one. This one's called Sangria. And it's got that purple and red sort of thinner horn pepper. These guys are just like growing a traditional bell pepper. They love heat. They love sun. So outside, beginning of September, the heat is so, well, right now it's not bad, but um, it can get pretty hot in September, sometimes over 90 degrees. The peppers love it. As we get a little bit cooler into the fall, you might see them, they'll, they'll do fine for a while, but once we get into freezing temperatures, they're really gonna have a hard time. So this is a great plant to actually take out of your fall combos and bring them inside and you can grow them as a house plant. Nice sunny window, um, bright light coming in, perfect. Look at the colors just peeking on the mom. So we're starting to get more and more colors here, but I wanted to show you these guys over here. Check this out. So these are asters and um, our traditional asters, they do bloom in the fall typically. And this is called Henry. I think this is Henry purple. And these asters are zones, hardiness zones four through eight. So they are hardy for us. But remember, because they're a fall crop and they're coming out late season, you wanna make sure in order to maintain that hardiness and get them to naturalize, get them planted as soon as possible. Again, if you grow them in containers and so forth, that's fine. Just, they might not winter over in that container unless it's protected. So if you plant it in a container garden, let them develop over the fall season, then let them naturally die back, place them in a garage um, real close to the house on a protected side and um, kind of mulch around them. And that should be okay for them. So just be aware that these can be great perennials for you. 
um, but also can be used as colorful fall plants for you. The violas and pansies are here as well. So um, I always enjoy planting violas and pansies in the fall. Um, obviously the smaller flowered violas right here, when you plant them in the fall, as the temperatures cool, they tend to last a very, very long time into winter. Sometimes they'll die back a little bit or be covered with the snow, but if it warms up, they pop right back out again. So I love them in containers. I love them in the landscape, especially for fall. So now you have color for fall, winter, and spring. They'll pop back up again too. So it's a good time to plant these guys. Beautiful violas really fragrant. They have a nice sweet fragrance to them. And of course the large flowering pansies are always a favorite too with their cool faces. Cabbage and kale are here as well. Of course, they make a great fall complement to all the violas and pansies and celosia and mums, of course, that we've already seen. What we love about the cabbage and kale, and I'll show you cabbage, obviously nice rounded leaf here. Kale is gonna be a little bit more wrinkly okay or a little bit sharper edges on the the cabbage and kale or excuse me the kale but these guys they're just starting out you won't see a lot of color variation in them other than like the the green and white versus the purple and white because the purple will have a little bit darker leaves um, but really what we're waiting on these is those colder temperatures. Once it gets nice and cool out in the fall, that's when all of their coloration really develops. So um, still early on these guys, but they're looking great out here. We are in the nursery and I wanted to show you Firelight. So Firelight is a panicle hydrangea and we're kind of approaching sort of the three stages in the hydrangea. So I'm by a real dry, kind of drier flower. It has blushed. It's gonna get much redder as it gets cooler in the evening. But check this out. It's a brand new flower um, that's white right now, but it's gonna turn that pinky color as well. So your firelight panicles, and this is really true with most of your panicle hydrangeas, they kind of develop in stages where those flowers will bud and bloom and then start to color and they'll start to change into different color stages. And it just makes the plant look so cool. You can trim it and they'll produce more buds and blooms for you as well. So um, this is just, just a great, easy hydrangea, but we wanted to show you how all the colors kind of change and model on the plant. So it's nice to see all those different stages of color. And then below me, here is a really nice new uh, Wajilla. This is Stunner. Um, it's part of the Date Night series and the Date Night series, what's cool about them is that their foliage usually contrasts really highly with their flowering. So you're gonna notice like a purpley bronze foliage on Stunner and then beautiful tubular bright pink flowers on it. So it really is a, a really pretty hyd or hydrangea, not Wajilla. Um, but Stunner I think is uh, pretty compact, about two to three foot. Um, tall and wide, so that's nice size for that Wigella. Behind me is a river birch, and it's a clump river birch, and I don't think I mentioned that fall is a great time to plant. And I'm not just talking about nursery, I'm talking about perennials and, you know, getting your chrysanthemums or your fall mums in the ground, but it is really a great time. And if you're thinking about planting trees, river birch, one of our natives, beautiful tree. It's not one of those trees you want to plant too close to the house because they can get large. But if you have a nice space where you can just let them fill in, maybe a little bit of a wetter spot, um, they'll do really, really nicely for you. They can handle our clay soils. More nursery out there for fall. Well, I should say late summer, almost fall color. Check out the Rosa Sharon trees. I know we've talked about these before, but this is sugar tip. Sugar tip is one of my favorites because of its variegated foliage. So not only is it a beautiful late summer bloomer, but it always looks great out in the landscape because of that variegated color on its foliage. The Rosa Sharon trees, they're not big trees. They're really small. They're nice little specimens for the yard and the landscape. You're talking maybe about 12 to 15 feet tall at maturity, but if you prune them every year in the spring, 
they will stay nice and compact for you. So think about that if you're looking for some late summer fall color. And look at this flower, beautiful doubled blush pink. It does have some red eye to it. So pollinators love these guys. So if you're wanting to bring the pollinators in, the roses Sharon are awesome. And down below, this is chiffon pink. Um, again, roses Sharon, but this is the bush type. And you're looking at them, they look quite compact right now because we end up cutting them very, very hard in the springtime. But I'm gonna tell you, this will grow probably up to about six foot tall and fill out. If you don't want them to be six foot, you cut them down again in the spring. So no problem whatsoever, but great late season color and blooming. And they'll last for um, quite a long time into the fall. Right next to me is spilled wine. So this is a nice kind of deep, dark purple, bronzy purple foliage, Wigella, um, very kind of low growing here. Nice um, bright pink flowers as well. Um, different from Stunner than we showed you earlier, has a little bit more green to it, um, but still, and very low kind of ground cover um, habit with this one, um, but very, very cool combination. Looks great with your Rosa Sharon as well. I'm so excited about this tree behind me. This is a red bud tree. So you know the red buds as they are an Ohio native. They usually bloom a really bright violet, purpley, pink, flower or yeah small flower in the springtime um, but look at this one this one's a flamethrower and flamethrower develops yellow green and red burgundy foliage so kind of a, a really cool tree these are smaller trees however not as small as like the rosa sharon tree you're still looking at about 15 to 20 foot tall and just as much width. They have a really nice round canopy on them. So talk about a nice specimen tree behind me. Also, look at this. So Pugster, Periwinkle, Budlia, looking beautiful, really attracting the pollinators there. I also have Miss Molly right next to me, a little bit taller Budlia. If you're looking for that taller butterfly bush, she'd fit the bill. And then check out this yellow Arborvitae. This is Forever Goldie. Forever Goldie Arborvitae is actually a Western Arborvitae, which are the ones that are deer resistant. So if you're looking for, you know, really bright, colorful evergreen, um, upright, try Forever Goldie. She's so pretty. Um, kind of um, a little bit more slower growing, a little bit more compact than something like Green Giant. Green Giant can get pretty tall. Um, Forever Goldie is gonna be right around like the 12 to 15 foot mark on prune. So you can keep her tighter and shorter if you'd like as well. We're in the perennials now and check out the blues that are coming into flower. So um, what I'm holding is Caryopteris. Sometimes it's called blue mist spirea. It is kind of what I'd call a sub shrub where um, it fills out, it kind of feels woody, but it dies back really hard over the winter. So that's kind of why we keep it in the perennial section. And um, boy, they are really, really looking phenomenal. So this is first choice that I have right here. This white blotched variegated is called Snow Fairy. Look at that foliage color and the flowers are just starting to develop there. And then behind me, this is a new one for us. It has a creamy variegation. It's actually called White Surprise, um, but really pretty flowering and, and variegated color, beautiful. We love the Caryopteris again because they do attract the pollinators and they're really good as far as deer resistance is concerned too. Um, kind of coupled with, check it out, our perennial hibiscus. So perennial hibiscus, are in their heyday, kind of late summer, early fall. Um, they, they take their own sweet time um, kind of developing and getting into bloom, but check that out. So we've got Midnight Marvel here is that bright red, the nice dark kind of um, reddish uh, bronze leaf. And then also we've got the bicolor white and red back there um, and just looking gorgeous. Now, these perennial hibiscus, uh, remember, they are a plant for like rain gardens. They love wetter soils. They do great in our clay soils. Um, they really do a nice job, but they will die back completely 
over the winter. So as they kind of yellow and brown out in the fall, I sort of cut them back as they continue to sort of die back. And then I leave maybe a couple inches of their bottom stem just as a marker because next year they're gonna fill out and grow all new wood, if you will, all new stems and all new buds and blooms. So um, just remember, kind of cut them back as they die back. Um, you can do it in the spring too, but boy, do they get real messy over the winter time. Um, so I tend to cut them back in the fall as they die back and then let them fill out again late spring. They take their own sweet time developing. Check this combo out. So we've got that beautiful sweet autumn clematis, okay? This is one of your latest blooming clematis, um, clematis paniculata, and it does have a really sweet fragrance. It's awesome. Um, kind of shorties here, if you will, because they're kind of young and immature, but Sweet Autumn can grow an eight foot trellis, no problem, even higher if you want. So if you want her to cover an arbor or what have you, absolutely, Sweet Autumn will do it. Coupled with that beautiful hardy plumbago or leadwort, beautiful kind of electric blue color here. There's not a lot of plants out there in the plant world that have this true blue, electric blue color. So really a great ground cover, very, very nice in kind of hard to grow areas. Um, sunny spots, really where you want them, but they can grow in shade. Um, they'll develop red foliage in the autumn. So again, it'll be bright blue, kind of late summer, and then turn a nice deep red in the autumn. So great plant, and there's pollinators all over here too. So again, if you're trying to attract the pollinators, these are really two great guys. Then just behind here hiding is this little bunny grass, and this is what we call penicetum. So the penicetum family has those big seed heads on it. Little bunny is maybe 18 inches when it fills out and flowers, but check out redhead. So redhead has these dark seed heads. They're much longer, probably about four to six inches, I imagine. A Little bit taller grass, usually about three to four foot in the landscape, but same family, very hardy. They love to be in full sun, well-drained soils. They can tolerate clay soil, but coupled together with these guys, you'll have a great fall combo. So check us out. This is everything here for early fall, September, Appetites.